Good morning, my friends. My name is Ron. This is, this is Spirit Moves. I'm so glad to come before you today to share a devotion with you. This devotion is called the Dirty Diamond. The Dirty Diamond. This is a story about a man, about 75 years old. His name is Mr. Smith. He was kind of uh, quite in the neighborhood, kind of kept to himself, but was friendly enough. He lived next door to a little boy, and the boy's name was Timmy. And Timmy played in the backyard a whole lot, you know, doing things, playing games, and just having general fun in the backyard. And Mr. Smith spent a lot of time in his backyard. Sometimes he'd be working, sometimes he'd be gardening, sometimes just be relaxing in an easy chair. Well, as a the made introductions, and the man started telling Timmy stories of his past. He lived a colorful life, so to say. And he told many true stories to Timmy by his younger days. You see, Mr. Smith, when he was a young boy, he wanted excitement. So as soon as he got old enough, he joined the Foreign Legion. Yeah, volunteer. And the foreign legion took him to Africa to fight battles in Africa. He had all kinds of stories to tell the, the, the you know, the boy. And the boy was, wow, you know, you already done that, really? He said, yes, yes to me, I already done that. Well, they got along pretty good together, but one day Mr. Smith slumped in the backyard because he had a heart attack. So he was laying on, you know, slumped over completely out. Timmy seen this, so he uh, jumped over the fence, tried to retrieve him, couldn't, jumped back over the phone, went inside his house, called 911 to report his neighbor was not, his neighbor was out in the backyard unconscious. So 911 came and they, and they assessed the old man and took him to the hospital. He spent about a month in the hospital he had a heart attack, pretty significant heart attack. But after about a month, he got released. And when he was released, uh, they get to tell him he had a bad heart. So give the medication to take and certain rules of conduct for a person that had a bad heart. So Mr. Smith continued telling him, the boy more and more stories. The old man felt very grateful. He knew that little boy saved his life. But if he would have laid much longer, he would not, and they would have not been able to bring it back to consciousness. So he felt that he owed the boy something special. So he went inside his house. He came back to Timmy. He said, I got something very special to give to you. And he opened his hands, a big, huge diamond. And he's, this is called the Dirty Diamond. It's, just a, it's called a Dirty Diamond because some of it is not as clear as it should be. He uh, took it off a dead man while I was in Africa. He said, I've never been married. Uh, I could have cashed this in for, for money, but, but I never did. I've been told it's worth probably more than $10 million. And I want you to have it. Uh, as a thank you for saving my life. Timmy said, no, you don't have this, and really. He said, if I don't give it to you, after I die, the government will come in and take it all anyhow. I really have, you have something very special that can help prepare for your future. So he was all happy, he took it, ran to his, mommy, mommy, Mr. Smith, give me this diamond. It's a dirty diamond, but it's very valuable. The old woman said, no, that's not, get rid of that piece of junk. It's not a piece of junk, it's a diamond. So that's nonsense, if I ever heard any nonsense. You take that back right now, and you give it back to Mr. Smith, and I follow you on the backyard, make sure you do give it back to him. So she followed him. He said, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith, my mama won't let me keep it. And mama said, listen, keep your dirty garbage to yourself, you know, you, I, all I want... You might send nothing ever again. 
Okay, I'm sorry to offend you. I didn't mean to offend you, Mr. Smith, the mama. Well, what happened about a month, a couple months later, Mr. Smith had a massive heart attack and he died. That's right, he died. And true enough, the governor came out and started assaying, the assayers came out to assay the house. So let's try and gain more information. So I knocked on the next door. I said, did you know the old man, Mr. Smith? She says, yes. Then we just wanted to know if you know he's anything. You can it. seems to you like he had a heart attack. It's about one thing we don't get. He had a dirty diamond that was worth at least $10 million. She had, she fainted. Uh huh. She fainted because she never had seen value in a precious stone. The government got a little. Ah, uh, too bad. It's a gift offer, but she did not receive the gift because she didn't want it. It's a free gift. Um, there's free gift that we can have today if we use wisdom. We use the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's free gift for us. All right, you know John three sixteen. For God so loved the world, gives His only begotten Son, whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Uh huh. And John three sixteen, for God so loved the world, gives his only begotten Son. And we spoke about this before the word begotten. In Greek, it means monogenes, which means unique, one of a kind. He gives his unique, one of a kind Son to be to, to offer you salvation through Him. He loved you so much, He gave His Son, but through His Son, you may receive salvation, be cleansed of our sins. How great of a gift is that, the gift of God? It's a, it's a great gift. I'm going to read you another scripture. In Ephesians 2, verse 8. Where it is by grace that he have been saved through faith. This none of yourself is a gift of God. None of works than anyone can boast. It is a grace you've been giving through faith. The grace for it is by grace. I looked up the word grace. And it had several meanings, the word grace. It means favor. Favor means that someone really cares a lot for you. It bends over backwards to accommodate you. Favor. Grace also means courteous, gentle spirit, goodwill. It means honor. Or credit generous free undeserved receiver of something good you have the giver you have a receiver when a gift is off you have to don't be like Timmy's mama proud and boisterous and think you know it all it cost her a whole lot of help that she could have provided for her and her family don't become like like her it is grace that we've been saved through faith and not of yourself. I used to ask people representing salvation. And the question is, if God said to you, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? Well, people usually starts with the thing, well, I, I've been a good man most of my life. I, I, I've helped my neighbor. I, I paid some money to tithes. I, mean, I even went to church. I'm a nice guy. I really am. But the thing is, it's all about I. I. I am sinful in my nature. It's my nature to sin. I was born into sin. And I participate in sin. It was my nature. Until I receive the gift of God, salvation. And now I, you can't earn it, cannot deserve it. It's a gift of God. So no use trying to boast on your head. If you make it to heaven, that is, don't try to boast. It's not about I, me, myself. It's about the love of Christ. 
How does this respond to you today, my friends? To remember, God gave his best that he had. Gives us concern about our souls. We need to be grateful. We need to praise the Lord and lift up holy hands and thank you, Jesus, for my salvation. Help me, mold me into what it should be for you will. So, Holy Spirit, come into my life. Lead me, guide me, Holy Spirit, each and every day. Give me wisdom and help. Help me to have strength in my body, healing, so I can go and present your gospel and the good news to other people. My friends, we need to take our, this gift that we have and share it. Share the good news. That's all I have for today. I want to say hi to my special friends that leave me messages of encouragement and hope. <laughs> it just thrills my soul when I hear from you. I like to hear from you more often. Praise the Lord. God be with you. Hope you have a very blessed week.